As a scholar on second-generation immigrants' academic performance, what have you found so far? The public have a myth that those children whose mother are from the southeastern Asia may not be able to catch with the class and end up falling behind. However, my research has found that the average academic performance of second-generation immigrants is no worse than other kids in school if their fathers are educated and have a stable income. Parts of those reasons why the society has this kind of stereotype are mostly because that most Taiwanese guys who marry foreign spouses, I have to say, are the minorities who are less educated with lower income. So when the father's income is lower than average, those children indeed would not receive good education resources or pursue higher education. So the main problem is not the nationality of those foreign spouses. There are not any bad influences for the kids' academic performance. When their mothers come from the southeastern Asian countries, the determinant factor is actually on father's side. Our research also found that in most new immigrant families, the moms have higher education background than the fathers, while most of the mothers are the financial support of the family. There are also many teachers in elementary school encourage those foreign spouses not to talk to their children in their native language, no matter at school or at home, because they thought it might have a bad influence for those second generation to learn Chinese. I think you can all hear me. Do I have any problem speaking Chinese? No. We have not found any second generation, not anyone, who has problems speaking Chinese. On the contrary, they are bilingual, and those who talk to their mother in their native language would have better comprehension, for they can switch the two languages. That provides them a better comprehension on both languages. And we also noticed some second-generation immigrants are reluctant to admit the fact that their mothers are from Southeast Asia. They might feel ashamed of their mother's nationality and feel intimidated that their classmate might look down upon them. And we also found out that the self-confidence has a lot to do with the children's academic performance. So the first step for us is to encourage the second-generation immigrants. To build up confidence and not to be afraid of telling others about their identity. The only way to build up self-confidence is to recognize your identity and recognize your mother's identity, so you can do well on every aspect of life. Why are you encouraging migrant workers to go to college in Taiwan? Well, we need more foreign students from the Southeast Asian countries, and it's a win-win situation. Honestly, instead of going abroad and recruiting students from those Southeast Asian countries, why don't we just recruit those who already speak Chinese? Well, most of the migrant workers in Taiwan already hold a high school diploma. Why not give them the chance to go to college here in Taiwan? For migrant workers, if they want to go to night school here, it's actually not against their contract. The only problem is to communicate with their employers. While some employer might think if the migrant workers go to school after work, they might not be as productive as they used to. Let me tell you, this is not true. First of all, if the migrant workers go to school after work, they are getting higher education, which means you can have a higher quality manpower. That is definitely a win-win situation. For the second point, many employers are very concerned about one thing, which is the situation of runaway migrant workers. Other employers are worried that the migrant worker might escape from their company and get another job in another place, or be involved in illegal activities. Well, we are all concerned about this, and let me tell you: if the migrant worker go to school after work and is required to go to school every week. He or she will have a goal, like getting the college degree in forty years. When thinking about this, he or she will not think about running away. So I personally think the project of having migrant workers to go to college is actually a four wings situation, from the migrant worker to the employer, and from Taiwanese government to the Southeast Asian countries government. My suggestion for the new Southbound policy. 
Well, in fact, our second generation immigrant have a very big advantage. I'm going to house. The first advantage they have is their cultural background. Their ability of native level Southeastern Asian languages. Beside the language advantage, they also acquire a highly cultural sensitivity because they grew up with parents from two different cultural backgrounds, which makes them valuable for the Southeast Asian market. The other advantage is their social network, the most important thing for business. Take myself for instance, my mother has nine siblings. And each of them has three to four kids, which means I have around 30 cousins in total. Living in Indonesia, and they are involved in different fields of business in Indonesia. And most of them have great achievements from the film industry to the storage industry, media industry, and then the food industry. They are all very successful. So I would say they are all my social network resources. Considering all the second generation immigrants with all those social networks, I think the government should make a good use of them. And I think it would be great if the government could hold some training program for them. Like what they do in South Korea. While well, making good use of our advantage. So what do they do in South Korea? Well, it is simple. On the senior year in college, before graduating, We can have a language training, like every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We could provide a Southeast Asian language training for those senior students. And when they finish college, the company could send them to work in the Southeast Asian countries, like what they do in South Korea. So how are we going to do this? They can go to local college during the day. They can study local language in the morning and go back to office to work in the afternoon and in the evening or weekends. The company can have those young talents to research the local market and understand the local business situation. Like I just said, our second generation immigrants have the social network advantages which Korean companies don't have. And this is our greatest advantage.